Qatar Airways, taking you on a journey with Quest. It has always baffled me how it can take longer to become an architect than practically any other profession. So I'm heading back to the classroom. Let the learning begin. To find out at London's prestigious Bartlett School. So there's a, a deck, a main deck area or a main uh, body area where they can then... These are the designers of the future. They are nearing the end of their seven years of study. So at this stage of their career, it's all about experimentation and expression. It basically can transform from a winter suit, which would be the full suit, into a summer suit. And all you have to do is barker it up, like so, <laughs> and away you go. Bikes, survival suits and mosquito-like solar panels. A far cry from the drawing boards I expected to see. How do you see this affecting your next project? Their professor, Colin Fournier, has invited me to join them for a crash course. In this particular school, we very much want to encourage them to sort of break new ground and to redefine what the architect might be. We encourage students to to, to, to explore in all kinds of different directions. And they choose their own interests. So the territory is not defined in advance. If it's just one word in terms of what the student should do, I think it's passion. To be totally passionate about what they do. And it doesn't matter what it is. It can be doing a space station. It can be designing one detail of a piece of furniture. But they have to be totally passionate about it. Like their life would not me have any meaning if they didn't do this one thing. I think that's the key. My challenge today is to find my own passion, to get stuck in and make a contribution to the year's key project. We are working on a pavilion that will open to the public in the summer of 2008. It will be an exhibition space in central London that will showcase cutting-edge ideas on design and sustainability. It's pretty rare for students to ever actually build something. Why do they generally want to come into the profession? I think the love is to actually make something that is built and that people can live in and can experience. It's, it's, it, as opposed to the world of ideas, because it is this combination of very different interests, from philosophy to art to technicalities, it's very few professions give you that range. And I think, I think you will find that most students going into architecture really are fascinated by, by the scope, by the, by the range. It's, it's, it's uh, emotional sensitivity on the one hand and, and precision on the other. And when it works, when the two come together and it's built and you can touch it and people enjoy it, then you've done it. What is the love? of being an architect? What is the drive? What makes you want to do it? Uh, I think the, it's the challenge. It's the constantly evolving design process. Depending on the brief, no one day, no one project is ever the same. I've always wanted to be an architect. And the first, the first instant was because of that, that, that idea that you could turn something very 2D, that, that first initial sketch into something quite massive, quite, something quite big. To, and actually give something back to the community and actually start to, to give something and, and create a space that's really exciting for people to use. A building is really putting a huge impact on people and it's really leaving your mark. And to be able to do that in, the, in our world is something quite, I think, important. Do you all get a kick out of the idea? that that's a building that could have your name on it. If you didn't, you wouldn't be doing this. Because it's, like you said, seven years. That's a hell of a long time, at, at the minimum. And so you have to have that kick out of it, or you just wouldn't do it. Hour after hour, all day I'm surrounded by deep, theoretical discussion about this pavilion. The students are more concerned with the philosophy of the building. 
And I keep getting lost in the details, like, where are the toilets going to go? You know, they say you become an architect at 50. You will find that most of the people who, who've actually built are people who waited quite a long time before they were able to, to execute the stuff that they really want. But it doesn't seem rational or reasonable that it takes longer to become an architect than it does to become a doctor. I think it's about the same. I think it's about the same. The difference is that, you know, doctors can bury their mistakes, whereas we can't. So in a way, we have to be a bit more cautious. We have to work a bit longer on making sure we sort of mature our thoughts and our ideas. It's pretty clear that my ideas need a great deal of maturing. Once I'd done that, everybody else became concerned with where the toilets were. However, <laughs> <laughs> the day finishes with the dreaded critique. This session is designed to prepare students for life in the real world of an architectural firm. You have to defend your ideas, inspire your colleagues, justify your contribution. No, with respect, there's a strong argument for saying that the view, you, like, you like the view over